Welcome back to the show, folks. John Pollock here alongside Robin Black. UFC 186, it is coming up Saturday night, April the 25th. One of the fights that we are looking forward to, a lightweight bout, as David Michaud will be meeting this man, Olivier Oban Mercier. Olivier, how are you today? Yeah, I'm pretty good. We're a few weeks out from the fight, so have we, have we got into the uh, life is miserable phase yet, or are you still uh, a safe distance away from that at this point? No, I'm good. I, I'm eating right now, so uh, I'm feeling pretty great. As long as you can keep eating, once you get into that sort of Monday, Tuesday range, whether you haven't had a carbohydrate in a couple of weeks, you start dehydrating, you don't feel too good, eh? Uh, yeah, you feel mad, you feel sad, you feel uh, all the bad uh, the bad things, the bad emotions are coming out. Mad, sad, and, and, and bad, those rhyme too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm kind of a douche too, so <laughs> don't be close to me on those two days. You know, Olivier, you have kind of had the two extremes uh, thus far during your, your two UFC performances. I know we spoke to you after the Chad LaPreeze fight, and, I mean, you were your, your biggest critic of that fight. You fast forward to the Halifax card against Jake Lindsay and one of the best submissions of the year. I, I mean, kind of two contrasting feelings, I guess, coming out of your, your respective fights at this point. You've kind of experienced the full gamut of your UFC experience at this point. Yeah, that was too... Uh really different thing um but i think during after my uh my chat my fight with chad uh, i learned a lot and um i still learn with uh with uh, jake so i think it's a process uh, to to get better to uh, to get to the top actually uh, Ollie, I want to ask you about judo. Judo was your base as a martial art, and we're seeing so much more and more of it. Ronda Rousey aside, we're seeing more of it. Is it because people have gotten so good at defending the single leg and defending the double leg that uh, people are trying to incorporate judo throws and trips uh, to offensively take people down? Uh, maybe, but I think uh, with the thing with wrestling, it's easier to get up. So when you get taken down by a wrestler, it's going to be easier for the other guy to get up. It's going to be a lot of uh, energy wasting on uh, keeping the guy down. Uh, where judo, if you take the guy down, he's on his back and you're on top of him. So it's pre it's pretty easier to, to keep it down. So I think that's a big advantage. But still, I think uh, wrestling is going to do a big comeback soon. So we're going to see. Yeah, I mean, as people get better at one thing, then other teams start finding ways to get around that answer. So right now, yeah, judo, you end up in side control or you end up in a more dominant position, plus the power of, of impacting a guy. But as soon as it swings that way, then it'll swing back the other way again. Yeah, I think we're going to find like a, maybe a middle point at some, uh, soon. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe it's going to look like a little bit like Sambo, uh, like uh, Nagomenov, who's doing a lot of uh, body lock and uh, wrestling. I'm curious. I think that's where we're going up. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, Olivier, as well, you know, with with your, your judo foundation, when you were first experimenting, you know, at square one with, with being on your back and learning jujitsu, I mean, they have the, the common trait that, that the hips are a very big part of it. Is there a relationship there that you came in with or was it two completely different disciplines where th there wasn't a whole lot you, you took from one that helped with the other? Uh, no, my judo helped me a lot with my uh, jiu-jitsu and my wrestling. For sure, the first month was a hell. But uh, when I I felt that it wasn't good to uh, get on my belly uh, like in judo, right? Um, I think uh, I understood something big uh, over there. But I think that's a big mistake that a lot of judo guys do. Um, not judo guy, but judo girl too. I think Ronda sometimes she's She's giving up his back a little bit uh, too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a judo thing, you know. And um, if you get rid of it, it's it's perfect. You can uh, be a really dominant uh, uh, Nevada fighter, a uh, ground fighter. So that's the only thing that I see in judo that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. What have you focused on when, when it comes to uh, to David Michaud? Anything in spe specifically that you and your team have kind of zoned in on with his game? Other than I find there's a, 
uh, startling similarity between you two. I mean, I, I think people might be looking at you as like long lost brothers when you guys walk into the ring. Very similar hair, very similar facial features, Olivier. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems Both like French. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, yeah, this he's, quite the his connection name is here. More French than mine, eh? Yeah, he's got a way Frencher name than you, which is yeah, weird. From some, is yeah, I don't know what's up with that. How do you feel about slapping around uh, a fellow Frenchman? Uh, I don't know. I. I I like to think that when they they did the matchup, they, uh, Dana White and all the matchmaker was uh, yeah, on the table and laughing at, hey, look at those two guys. They just look alike. And, oh, yeah, hey, I have a good joke for you guys. Just put them together. And, yeah, well, maybe this like, just <laughs> that's how it happened, you know? Yeah. Well, it's it's a way to keep some of these fights. I've got to imagine between 575 fighters on the roster that there are some hilarious stories from Joe Silva and Sean Shelby about how they have made fights together. I wouldn't put it past them that there is a dartboard at times when it comes to putting <laughs> together some of these fights. <laughs> it's good. He looked like me, but now I, uh, me and my entourage think he looked more like a Saint Trudeau from Canada. So. It's good. I, I gotta be mad at him when I'm gonna fight him. See, the line you gotta use during fight week, Olivier, is that we might look similar right now, but after 15 minutes, that guy's gonna look nothing like me. Oh, god, that's a good line. There you go. Yeah, you yeah, you can you, file you can, that one away. That's yeah, that's a money that, headline. Yeah, use that one for yeah, free. Don't, yeah, exactly. Don't put it on the on the radio this one. Eh? I'm gonna use it all week. So. <laughs> we'll, we'll censor it. <laughs> uh, are, are you having fun these days? Is now here you are going into your third UFC fight. You know, at, you're a, more than a week out, so you aren't starving yourself. Are you enjoying this whole process? Is this what you hoped it would be? Um, well, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't enjoy it, but I still do it. I mean. The thing that I really like with my life, it's uh, it's training. You know, I don't like conditioning. I really like the technique, the judo, the jujitsu, the boxing. And um, I think for me to do all of this, I, I need to fight once once in a while. So yeah. <laughs> I, I won't say I enjoy the <clears throat> the week before my, my fight, but um, I enjoy the fight for sure. But not the week before. <laughs> We, too much stress, too much, uh, yeah. too much. Uh, I don't know, no party, no food, yeah. no, uh, no nothing. So it's, uh, it's kind of hard. Is the time between fights a, a good length for you? We, we last saw you in October, Olivier, and it seems that there, there's a lot of the Canadian fighters that they, they try to customize these Canadian cards to have a lot of Canadian fighters on them. Would you be? Are, are you happy with with this time in between fights the, thus far that you've had over the past year? Uh, right now, I'm happy with it because I can just get better. Uh, but for sure, when uh, maybe later I gonna do uh, more fights, uh, when I gonna feel that improving, it's not the same as uh, now. Now I'm improving so easily; it's uh, it's really fast. I mean, my style change uh, out well uh, since my last fight, so it's gonna be a big surprise, I think, for everybody to see me fight. Uh, on the Bell Centers. Cool. Uh, hey, would this be accurate? There, There's a certain amount of fighters that I've spoken to and got to know, and they love being a martial artist. They love training, getting better at the martial arts. They love being in the gym. And mm -hmm. fighting is this kind of scary thing that they have to do to earn money to have a life as a martial artist. Would that be accurate of you? Oh, yeah, actually. Uh, it's, uh, it's exactly me. <laughs> yeah, it's a fascinating thing when we look at that, that you're with some people, you know, you talk to Rory McDonald. Rory wants to fight people. Rory wants, loves the feeling of getting in there and fighting. But there are, there is a whole world of you guys who are true martial artists who look at it as like uh, being a, um, a combat sportsman is the job that you have to do to be able to make a living to be a martial artist. That's true of you, eh? Yeah, but I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah. I like the feeling to fight in, uh, mm -hmm. in front of everybody, but it's not a feeling that I need in my life. I mean, for me, fight in front of everybody or fight at the gym is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because at the gym, there is no pressure. There is no, uh, I don't know, the, nobody is there to, uh, yeah. to, to judge you or anything. So I really enjoy fighting people at the gym. How, um, how about like an isolated moment? Like you go back to Halifax and here you apply an inverted triangle and I mean, I, I'm sure you, you've you've 
attempted it and succeeded at many times in the gym, but it's got to be a bit of a different ball game when you've got that many thousand people that are coming to their feet for a spectacular submission and the fact that you land a nice $50,000 bonus for landing it in front of so many people as opposed to the gym. Yeah, that's got to feel good. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the reason, though. <laughs> but like I said, I, I don't mind fighting in front of a lot of people. It's more the week before and the, yeah. like uh, everything. And if I had the choice to win my life just to fight in the gym or, or in front yeah. of everybody, I think I would choose the the gym. That's I think a lot of because people will find that fascinating, but uh, uh, I totally understand what you mean. I fought a little bit and, and I felt the same way. It's a wonderful thing to train and learn yeah. and, and work with people and, and push your body. But the day, you know, the week leading up to the fight, that's so much pressure. Are you getting good at trying to be able to flow within a cage with all those people watching the same way that you do in a gym is that part of the journey uh yeah that's part of their journey and i'm still in this journey so um for sure i think that was a big thing during my uh my chat fight uh maybe i didn't uh I wasn't used to it and uh with jake it was a little bit better but still it can get better hopefully it'll and, be better uh, this time again yeah, exactly. That's what I. I mean, that's what I'm aiming. You know, uh, every fight I want it to be better. I just uh, uh, and at some point, like be like I want to. You know. Well, you can catch Olivier in action Saturday night, April the 25th. It's UFC 186 at the Bell Center, 8 o'clock Eastern are the prelims, 10 Eastern, the pay-per-view. Uh, thank you so much for the time, Olivier. We wish you all the best going into fight week, and we will be watching. Yeah, have fun in there, man. Make sure you enjoy it. Yeah, I will. <laughs> All right. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Olivia. That was Thank great. You. Appreciate the time. Cheers, man.